All righty, let's talk about the Mile High Fools, the Denver Broncos, shall we? I, I got to ask this question. Like, I had no issues or qualms with them bringing in Vic Fangio to take over as head coach last year. Like, when you look at guys that have paid their dues, put in their time, enjoyed the level of success as a coordinator, you know, it was past Fangio's time to get an opportunity. And, and he finally got one, and it was well-deserved. So I absolutely have no qualms about them bringing him in. I just have to wonder, like, you bring in a new head coach. Uh, what, did you, what did you think, Elway, was going to happen when you traded for Joe Flacco? Like, how did you really envision this was going to go down? How did you think that this was possibly going to work out well? And even if your argument was you were thinking he was going to be a bridge guy until Drew Locke was ready to take over, said you had taken Locke in the second round, even still, Joe Flacco? Mr. Elite himself? Yeah, we saw how that went. But it wasn't the only thing that didn't go well for the Broncos in 2019. Looking at Bradley Chubb, you know, who had that phenomenal rookie season on the edge, opposite of Von Miller, tears his ACL in week four, and then he's lost for the year. The offense in general struggled mightily with Joe Flacco at the helm, and then once he went down, then Brandon Allen. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, as a result, was traded midseason. Uh, this is just a team that was, you know, struggling. You know, certainly, you could make an argument of, hey, what happens if they beat the Bears in the game they should have won? It's a fair question. It is a fair question. Sometimes it is those singular individual moments that could potentially change the trajectory of an entire season. Who knows what could happen? It's interesting to kind of debate and think about. But we know what did happen was is that it got to the point in time where Broncos fans were getting frustrated and they're saying enough of this crap, no more Flacco, no more Allen. It is Drew Locke time, damn it. Give us Drew, damn it! And we want him now! Otherwise, we're going to go to the dispensary downtown and get even more stone than we already are. And who could blame him? So thankfully, after the 3-8 and eight start, it finally was Drew Locke's time. You're going to see these last five games of the year what this kid's got to let you know, do you have reason for hope heading into 2020? Or do you know already he might not be that dude and you're already going back on this next draft, asking Elway to select yet another quarterback when you know his history of drafting him as maybe at best and probably a lot worse. Well, you probably saw some promising things if you're a Broncos fan. The offense was better. The team responded. They went four and one in their last five games. Felt like this team was you know, kind of putting it together a little bit and kind of figuring it out. So, yeah, you finish 7-9, and nine and you start off 3-8, and eight, but that 4-1 and one finish, these are the types of finishes we talk about that sometimes teams can use as a springboard, as a launching pad for that next season, and we'll see ultimately whether this team does or not. Uh, so they went to work in the offseason, brought in Melvin Gordon uh, to play kind of counterbalance to Philip Lindsay in that Broncos backfield. So you already have Philip Lindsay. Now you added Melvin Gordon to the mix. Certainly not the worst thing in the world you could do. Uh, added Graham Glasgow to that offensive line on the defensive side of the ball. Brought in A.J. Boye, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Made the trade to bring in Jarrell Casey. You know, I look Jarrell Casey, Vic Fangio's defense. He's envisioning an Akeem Hicks type of guy. And if Jarrell Casey could come in and have that similar level of impact on this Broncos defense, you know, and certainly it was a well worthwhile trade, especially the very little that they gave up in terms of draft pick capital to bring him in, especially when you find out what recently happened to the Broncos in terms of injury. Uh, they're going to need this guy to play in a Keem Hicks level here in 2020. And Darrell Casey, to be fair, has been criminally underrated, I think, for the vast majority of his career. It's a shame. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. And when you look at the draft, you know, this is a team that I at least appreciated and liked the approach of, hey, we think we might have our dude at quarterback. Let's get him some more help. They draft Jerry Judy in the first round, K.J. Hamler in the second round. They're saying to me, if nothing else, damn it, even drafting Cushenberry in the third round to start on that offensive line is, we're going to help out the young quarterback. We're going to invest in him. We're going to put the pieces around him. And either he succeeds or he fails, but it's not going to be because he didn't have the appropriate level of help. We're going to truly find out if he is able to do it or not based off of his own merits, his own skills, his own shortcomings and faults. Not because we gave him crappy wide receivers, a crappy offensive line, crappy running game, things like that. So I appreciate and like the approach that the Broncos put in place here, which I think creates some potential optimism here for the Broncos in 2020. You're looking at Drew Locke's five-game stretch to close out the season. Now that is granted a very small sample size. 
Um, but you at least have reason for encouragement. And I don't want to totally pop that balloon for Broncos fans right now. You should have the makings of what is a pretty decent one-two combination in the backfield with Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. You know, Lindsay's a guy that's rushed for a thousand yards of back-to-back -back season. Now you bring in Melvin Gordon. Like you would think that this running game should be a little more potent and you know provide even more consistency for young quarterback Drew Locke. You've got some nice young offensive skill talent. The aforementioned Jerry Judy. I think he's a guy based off of his skill set can actually come in as a rookie and contribute. Uh, for the Broncos as a receiver. But then you've got last year's first round pick, Noah Fant. I would certainly expect to take some type of leap forward in 2020. You've got former second round pick, Cortland Sutton, who had 1,100 yards plus uh, receiving last year. I think with this help around him, it's only going to make him better. You know, drafting a KJ Hamler and so forth. Like, this is a team that has some weapons in the passing game. If Drew Locke doesn't make it, it's not because the team failed to help him, it's because of Drew Locke. And then you look at the defensive side of the ball. You know, Vic Fangio's coaching the defense. This was a defense that was adequate last year. They weren't elite, but they don't have the horses yet to necessarily be elite. So you got to like the thought of Vic Fangio coaching that defense, being able to get the most that he possibly can out of that defense. Unfortunately, though, if you're a Broncos fan, it's like it's damned if you do and damned if you don't. Just as you're getting really excited in 2018 about the possibility of Von Miller and Bradley Chubb being point-counterpoint as edge rushers, terrorizing quarterbacks in the AFC West over the next several seasons. Bradley Chubb goes down early in 2019. Now as you're getting ready to get Bradley Chubb back into the fold off of that ACL injury, damn it, now all of a sudden Von Miller's got to go down with some serious ankle injury. It sounds like he might be out for the entire season. So not only are you worrying about Bradley Chubb coming back into the fold and how he's going to rebound from that knee surgery, now you're talking about the face of the franchise is exactly what the hell Von Miller has been for damn near the past decade now. Like, this is a leader. It's a future Hall of Famer. He has so many things for that team. He ain't going to be playing this year. Like, that's not a little impact. That's a significant impact. How could it not be? Even if you felt like Von Miller had a bit of a down year in 2019, the dude's still a stud. <laughs> I mean, he, he still is. And he is somebody you still have to account for as an opposing offense, and now he's not there. And then you look at the offensive side of the ball, and it's, you know, is Garrett Bowles going to ever be able to block and not hold any damn buddy? But even more than that, you look at Drew Locke. You know, he went in the second round for a reason. And yes, he didn't fall on his face in those five games, but how good was he really in those five games? And I'm not trying to diminish him or say, that he showed that he couldn't play at all. I don't think he showed that he couldn't play. I don't know if he showed how well he could play. Like, I don't know what his NFL upside really is at this point. I don't know how good I feel about trusting a guy and putting big hopes on him and the team for a 16-game season with a guy that's had five career NFL starts. And you could say, well, Mahomes, yeah, but Mahomes was a whole different level of special talent from a physical standpoint. Like, he, he's just freak, unique. You know, Locke has some special talents, but there were a lot of flaws in his game that I don't know necessarily been fixed. Now, if he comes out of the gate and he's playing at a high level and you get to the point where you start thinking, hey, he might be the second best quarterback in this division, uh, you know, then certainly you can overcome the Bob Miller injury. Certainly you'd be talking about a playoff team. It just feels like for me, looking ahead to 2020, it might be a bridge too far for me to cross at this moment. I think this is, again, maybe a 7-9 and nine team. Maybe they improve an eight, a little bit and go 8-8. Eight and eight. But, you know, I was thinking a little bit differently about them potentially until I found out the news about Von Miller. Like, that injury cannot be undersold. I think that's a big deal. And I just don't know if they have enough horses and enough other stars and other places on that defense in order to truly be able to overcome that and still be a top 10 level type of defense that they would need to be in order to make some type of playoff run. Um, certainly could happen, but you know, for all the credit you give to Fangio as a defensive coordinator, he also when you were in San Francisco and in Chicago, he had some great talent on both of those defenses. And Denver's defensive talent just doesn't quite measure up to those two units. So I expect the defense to be good, maybe flash a couple of special moments, but still have its moments where it can get dominated a little bit. And offensively, whew, 
And you're asking me a lot to totally buy into Drew Locke at this point. Sorry, Broncos fans. That's just the way it is.